It was really scary to join the show. I was a big fan of the show anyway, um, and it wasn't lost on me how big the show was, so I was <laughs> absolutely terrified. Um, but everybody was gorgeous and lovely and welcoming. Claudia, I want to start with you because love is important on the show, but like friend love is just as important as romantic love. So we're heartbroken that <laughs> Eloise and Penn are like, you know, not in good shape. So can you tell us about the status of the friendship and, you know, can we expect a happy ending in that love story? Oh. It's horrible, isn't it, seeing them fight? It's sad. Yes. I think, but obviously this has been brewing for a couple of seasons now. I think all of us, uh, the fans of the show, knew that there was going to have to be a point where Eloise found out. Um, and it sort of can't be brushed over. <laughs> it's such a big betrayal in Eloise's I eyes. Know. Um, so the status, I'm going to say it's complicated <laughs> currently. <laughs> Um, but I think they just, I think it's going to benefit them though because it's nice for them to have a bit of independence to, for, you know, Penelope to really bloom without, you know, I think she needed that independence and I feel the same for Eloise as well. I think it's going to benefit them. But yeah, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Golda, how much fun is it to have you know, this trio of women um, to, to play off and, and to hang out with. It's amazing. It's like going to, to work with your best mates, do you know what I mean? We hang yeah. out um, outside of the work as well. So, you know, that kind of plays into our artistry on set. It plays into all the breaks and uh, terrifies the directors when we come together <laughs> in a ball because it's like ra rallying Cats. Cats. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's great fun. And to be able to play opposite um, fantastic, distinguished actors as these two is an uh, absolute thrill. It's, yeah, you can feel the power in the room when we're all together and Danbury is speaking and we're all kind of, you know, and Violet speaking and the Queen speaking and that dialogue is like creating magic. So in seasons one and two, Cressida was not our favorite. However, <laughs> yeah, <it's a> lovely <laughs> girl, however, you have done the work because we're, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm coming around. So yes. let's talk about Cressida kind of uh, subverting our perceptions of her. Yeah. Big time. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you say I did the work. I'm like, yes, and that's reading, which is important, because you never know how that's going to come across. You know, you don't want it to look um, vindictive or cunning. So I'm glad that it, it, it has translated. Um, yeah, it's a big shift we see. We see her taking mm -hmm. her mask. Her mask is falling off, and, and primarily because of Eloise and that connection and that kindness that yeah. she's receiving. and. And we get to see more of her and we get to delve in and, and really see what's made her the way she is. And I hope that people see that, you know, the stereotypical mean girls that we've met in our life and that we see all around, not that there's yeah. so many, but you know what I'm saying, um, mm. that there's more that there's more going on um, and there's more deep inside that um, that they're dealing with and and that they've um, had some hardship, I think. You can feel that chemistry. That's why we all want to hang out with the three of you. Um, Adra, um, Lady Danbury, a fan favorite, and we've always seen her pretty composed. You know, she seems to be able to read the tea leaves before anybody else. But this season, I feel like she's a little off balance. Would you agree? She's yeah. thrown off her game, most definitely. And I think, you know, she's carefully constructed this tight, ring-fenced world where she knows what's going on, and she does know what's going on, and she's made a point of knowing what's going on for her survival and benefit and thriving in this world, because she came from a really powerless start, as we saw in the origin yeah. story. That's right. Um, and, and, uh, and I think, you know, what happens in this season is something she hasn't planned for, cannot control, comes out of left field, takes mm -hmm. her back into the difficulties of her past, and she has to... Um, she has to deal with her feelings about that. She has to deal mm -hmm. with the influence of that person on her beloved friend, um, yeah. uh, which scares her because 
this is an unreliable energy coming in now, a betraying yeah. energy, and one that she does not want in her world at all. Um, and um, she cannot control in the same way that she normally does. And I think it's great. I mean, it's lovely for me as an actor because, you know, you get to just I increase the expanse of the emotional highs and lows that you have to go through. Um, yeah. and, I, and I also think, <clears throat> you know, show me somebody in the world that looks like they're completely stush and together. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I will just peel that back and go, yeah, see that? Yeah. That's a wobbly mess in there. Because we've all got it, you know, what we yeah. present. Golda talks about the public and the private for oh. the Queen, and I think that, you know, that's what we do. We bring our game face in certain situations, and then in, in, in private moments, you, you see all the difficult underpinning. But he makes some of that difficult underpinning public, and that's a problem. Can I just say, like, Cressida's looks yeah. for me <laughs> are my favorite. The hair is bananas and amazing. Yeah. Um, so for the Bridgerton girls, do you ever like look at Cressida and are you like, well, why can't we have like eight coils coming out of our head <laughs> and wearing like what's the fashion been like to enjoy uh, uh, this season? Claudia. I mean, we're constantly asking to look like Cressida, actually. <laughs> That's our biggest thing on set. Um, yeah, the costumes, like, I feel sort of uh, spoil mostly, and now I've gotten very comfortable in being <laughs> spoil in costumes. I need to remember that it's not always like this on other jobs where, where you know, everything's really tailor-made to us. Um, mm -hmm. And the team, there are so many people in the costume department like, I can't tell you how many people are working yeah. on these outfits. And the fact that so many people's talents get to be displayed in one outfit at a time, it's like, it's so wonderful. I feel, yeah, it, it's really a privilege to, to wear them. And we really oh, mean that. They mean a lot to us, those costumes. So, Ruth, over mm -hmm. to you, Lady Violet. Um, you know, we don't want her to be lonely. No. Mm -hmm. And yet... Uh, dun dun da. We don't want her to be with the wrong person. No, we don't. No, that's very true. I don't understand any of that at the time. But no. I, but I do, I do enjoy flirting. I do enjoy <laughs> dipping my toe in that water. Really, yes. I think once we leave uh, Violet at the end of Queen Charlotte Bridgerton's story, we're she's definitely up for the idea of embracing life again. She's seen yeah. two children marry for love. Mm. She had a great love of her own life. And uh, she's lonely. She's lonely. She she's has not been lonely for, for many her. years because she's still, well, she has been lonely, but she hasn't ever been entertained the idea. And But yeah. seeing her two children marry and be happy, I think, is a real mirror in front of her. Hmm. So. Now, Hannah, you're new to the cast, and, you know, we, the Bridgerton fans, know that every season has a diamond. Um, and so, you know, you are stepping into glittering territory, let's say. <laughs> How has it been for you to, to come in and join the cast and also play this character that fans of the book have also been waiting to, to meet? Yeah, I mean, it was really scary to join the show. I was a big fan of the show anyway, um, and it wasn't lost on me how big the show was, so I was <laughs> absolutely terrified. Um, but everybody was gorgeous and lovely and welcoming. Um, but she's kind of a great character mm -hmm. to join a show like this playing because there was kind of like life imitating art a little bit in the sense that she's in a new environment, I was in a new environment, and she's kind of intimidated by the situation, I was intimidated by the situation. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she's just been an absolute joy to, to play and um, I hope audiences enjoy getting to know her um, as much as I've enjoyed getting to know her. Mm -hmm. Golda, to the Queen then on that note about loneliness um, and also about maybe kind of losing a bit of confidence after last season, um, you know, during the marriage mart. How, how, are we, how are we meeting with Queen Charlotte in season three? Yeah, I think you're right. She, um, we meet her uh, wobbling a little bit to, you know, extend um, Adjua's analogies of these characters. Um, and I think she's bored of what's gone on before. She's searching for something different. Mm. Um, and yeah, she finds it in a really interesting place in uh, Francesca who's this wonderful woman who is, you know, strong in herself. She's unapologetic. She seems to not want to 
um, what's the word? Uh, follow the he herd. Follow the herd, yeah, exactly. Um, and I think the Queen has seen lots of people herding in front of her <laughs> that she's slightly bored with now. And... Um, Raising and bleating. Yeah. <laughs> And is intrigued with this wonderful, beautiful, yeah, woman who seems to be. She's got an independent spirit. She's got she? an yeah. independent spirit, and I think there's a there's a re reflection of that that she sees.